So guys, radiculopathy and radicular pain. As physiotherapists, these are terms we come up against all the time. But if you're like me, when I was a younger physio, I didn't actually really understand the difference between the two. So this video is here to clear it all up for you. Let's dive in. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So as we said in the intro, if you're a physiotherapist or someone who's just interested in this field, it's really important for us to understand the differences between these two terms because it will affect our assessment and it definitely affects treatment and the prognosis for the patient. So first of all, radicular pain. What is it? How does it occur? And how does it present clinically? So effectively, radicular pain is abnormal signals of pain coming from a particular part of the spine. Now, if you look at this video, you can see here where there's a herniated disc in the spine and it's pressing against a very particular part of the spinal nerve, which is called the dorsal nerve root. The dorsal nerve root is the sensory nerve root and therefore it's all to do with the sensations in our body. Therefore, if you have a compression of that dorsal nerve root, it will send abnormal signals of pain down the arm if the problem is in the cervical spine or down the leg if the problem is in the lumbar spine. Now a disc herniation is by far the most common cause of radicular pain, but there are other causes such as lumbar spine stenosis where there's crowding around the nerves from the bones or a space occupying lesion such as a tumor. So it's really important we look out for these. Now, when it comes to the reasons why radicular pain is created, it seems like inflammation of the nerve is critical to the pathophysiology with some sources suggesting that it's when the nerves get compressed, it means that there is a lack of blood supply to the nerve, which means that it gets irritated enough to send those pain signals. So clinically, we tend to find the radicular pain has a particular quality to it that mimics a nerve pain. So you'll hear patients describe an electric sensation, a shooting sensation, a lancinating sensation, either down their arm or down their leg, which mimics that real quality of nerve pain. We also find that radicular pain is often really, really sensitive. Patients will report high pain levels. And in fact, a really clear sign is when they report that their radicular pain down their arm or their leg is worse than the pain at the spine itself, whether that be in the neck or the back. So look for arm pain or leg pain, which is worse than the spine pain. So next, what about radiculopathy? This is a slightly different concept. Here, we might imagine that the conduction of signal or the flow of signal down a nerve gets blocked. The majority of the time, this is due to mechanical pressure or compression. Now, with radicular pain, we almost described it as if there's atypical signals flowing down the nerve, which creates pain. With radiculopathy, there is a lack of signal going down the nerve because of that blockage. And this means we get different symptoms when it comes to a radiculopathy compared to radicular pain. So when it comes to those symptoms, that concept of nerve pathways being blocked is critical to understanding a radiculopathy. So think about when a sensory nerve is being blocked, our patient may well not experience the same sensation signals down their arm or down their leg. And therefore they may well experience pins and needles or numbness. If a motor nerve is being blocked, our patient won't experience the motor signal going down their leg and therefore they may get weakness or a lack of power in their arm or their leg. Now, reflex changes can also occur as a result of blocked signals in either the sensory or the motor pathways. And as a result, these three key symptoms, dermatomal changes in the form of numbness or pins and needles, myotomal changes in the form of motor weakness or reflex changes are a key concept in relation to radiculopathy. And therefore, with these patients, it's critically important that as a part of our assessment, we include myotomal testing, dermatomal testing, and reflex testing to look at these symptoms and see if they're present. So once again, to summarize, radicular pain is really all about the pain. Whereas a radiculopathy is less about the pain and more thinking about those three key changes, myotomal changes, dermatomal changes, and reflex changes. Now, of course, it's also really important to highlight that your patient can experience radicular pain and signs of a radiculopathy at the same time. So we always should be looking out for both of these situations in our practice. 
So next, let's briefly discuss treatment. So with all of these nerve-based symptoms, there's a couple of key concepts that we always bear in mind. Number one, education and reassurance. It's always important for us to give the patient information about what's going on and plenty of advice and reassurance that things will get better. This not only has an effect on calming down the patient, but it therefore can also calm down the nervous system too. Next, painkillers. It's really important for us to advise our patient to get their pain under control with the right painkillers for them. Now, this commonly means advising them to review their symptoms with their doctor, particularly to see if they are eligible for nerve-based painkillers, neuropathic painkillers, such as gabapentin or amitriptyline, to see if we can specifically target that nerve pain. And finally, we always want to encourage our patients to keep moving. But we always want to make sure that their exercises are not flaring up their symptoms. So whether it's specific physio exercises or just general advice about keeping moving with walking or cycling, the key thing is keeping things under control. So advise your patient to make sure they do that when they're keeping themselves moving. And generally, we find these concepts are enough to help our patients. Chu et al. in their review found that 60 to 90% of lumbar spine disc herniations do improve with conservative management alone. And generally, we find that presentations of radicular pain or radiculopathy that come from a disc herniation will improve with a natural history where 75 to 80% of them get better in 6 to 12 weeks. However, one really important point for me to say. Whilst we always want to help our patients with radicular pain get their symptoms under control, I often get a few more bells ringing in my head when a patient presents to me with signs of a true radiculopathy, particularly if they have true motor weakness or if they have true diminished reflexes on one side compared to the other. This is because those signs of a true radiculopathy indicate a more significant compression of those nerves because that nerve flow or that conduction of signal is not getting through. Therefore, if my patient does present with signs of a true radiculopathy, particularly if they report their symptoms are getting progressively worse, I want to really think about referring my patient on to an orthopedic team or perhaps for an MRI scan to really look at those nerve symptoms in detail and see if more urgent action is required to make sure that things don't get worse. So guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button. And remember, we've got loads of brilliant resources on our membership platform with brilliant webinars such as MSK red flags, lumbar spine red flags, sussing out sciatica and radiculopathy and lower limb neuropathies, all of which are on our membership platform, the link to which is in the description below. Once again, thank you so much for watching. My name's Khalid. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.